wanted to uh, give a little tour of this neighborhood. It's a museum of like antique cameras that is in a bar slash cafe. I got a little fat in this neighborhood. Welcome back everyone to Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are here in Chacarita again, right out in front of Chacarita Cemetery across from Estacion Federico La Croce. The same place where we started our first video in our return here to Buenos Aires. And why are we here? Well, we are here because this is going to be our last video from here in our return to Buenos Aires. We're gonna be moving on to another city here in Argentina. But before I did, I wanted to uh, give a little tour of this neighborhood which actually has featured in some of the other videos and um, just to let you know this is the neighborhood where I've been staying the entire time that I've been here here in the Chacarita neighborhood and I've enjoyed it quite a bit so come along and I'll let you know why thanks for clicking on the video if you want to help out the channel and help it grow I really would appreciate it click on the like button down there the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. So the first reason why, and the main reason why, and well, <laughs> if you've been watching any of the other videos I make about the neighborhoods where I stay and why I enjoy them, uh, the first reason I really enjoy this neighborhood is because it's like super, super accessible for public transportation. There is a metro stop right here, Federico La Croce metro stop on the red line, line B. There are uh, multiple bus stops here, in fact, like pretty much, I don't know, like every line in the city goes through here and they stop at these platforms here. The reason why is because uh, that's right here. Ferro Carril General Urquiza, Estacion Federico La Croce. There's a train line, the Urquiza train line, that runs further out west in the city, and it ends here at the station. And also, just down that way, one more metro stop, there's access to another train line, the Mitre train line. So basically, this neighborhood is a hub for uh, public transportation. Buses, subway, uh, commuter trains, all kinds of stuff. Everything runs through this neighborhood. So it makes it super, super convenient and easy to get to basically anywhere you wanna get to within the city, whether it's somewhere that's along uh, a subway stop or somewhere that's along a subway line, or if it's not, you can take a bus. And if it's further out, even going out into the suburbs, like uh, out into, for example, San Isidro, where we visited, or a suburb like that, you're gonna be able to get to whatever it is you need as far as like buses, trains, or subway to get to where it is you need to go. So it's excellent for that. Um, another thing that, of course, I really, really liked about this neighborhood while I was staying here is, uh, as you can see, across the street here, the streets are just like full of restaurants and shops because in Buenos Aires when there's a subway like a subte stop like for the metro or a major transportation hub like this there's gonna be a commercial area all around it so this whole area for blocks you know three or four blocks in that direction three or four blocks in direction heading behind us five six seven ten blocks going up Avenida Federico La Croce there's uh, all kinds of shops. Shops, cafes, restaurants. Right here is uh, El Imperio, the pizzeria that we went to in our first video here comparing the two pizzerias in this neighborhood. And this street, Avenida Federico da Cruz, La Croce, is a major, major commercial street. So there's all kinds of shops and restaurants and cafes and everything all along here, not just for like, uh, like shops, you know, for like selling clothing and stuff like this, but shops like uh, vegetable markets, 
carnicerias, butcher shops, and uh, little like supermercados where you can buy groceries, all within easy, easy walking distance if you're in this neighborhood. And you have a lot of choice also, which is really nice. Like there's a vegetable market pretty much on every block around this neighborhood in this area. So if you don't like one, you can go to another one. Like right up here, about half a block, there's a Carter Ford Express, which is like one of the chain uh, supermarkets in, in Argentina. And if you don't like that one, right around the corner, there's a Dia, which is another chain supermarket. There's also some like mom and pop supermarkets. One of them's about a block further down. And if you still can't find what you're looking for at any of those places and you need like a larger full size heat better mercado, like a giant supermarket, there's uh, one of those, a Carrefour full market. It's about eight blocks up. There's a Vea full size market about like eight blocks over that way. It's on the diagonal. And if neither of those are to your liking, you can hop on the uh, on the uh, metro or the sub the subte back there on line B and head off a few stops in either direction. And each one of these uh, little metro stop neighborhoods along the subte line, you get a whole new set of choices. So, for example, there's a very good carniceria, a uh, butcher shop. In this neighborhood, it's called Carniceria Forest. It's actually coming up right here across this intersection. Right across the, uh, diagonally across the intersection here with the green sign, Carnes Forest. Very, very good um, Carniceria. But one thing that this neighborhood doesn't really have is a uh, fish market, a pescaderia. But if you hop on, the uh, soup day and you go over like just two stops you know like a five minute ride basically on the soup day and you hop off there there is a pescaderia over there so basically if you need to get to it it's either a short walk or a short soup day ride away and what I really like is along here along the uh, line B the soup day line that runs back that way. Each one of the little neighborhoods that you stop at, where each one of the stops are, have its own kind of like uh, character, right? Because the soup day is so old and the stops, there's been so many, so many uh, decades that the uh, businesses and the neighborhoods have sort of popped up around that, sh uh, around the, um, the soup day stop. You get like a very, um, distinct, distinct and different neighborhood for each one. And it's very cool. It's like that, really, with every uh, every line of the soup day. Not just, um, not just the red line, the line B, but the other lines around here. To mention other lines around here, the line, what is it, D, I think? It's the green met uh, soup day line. I get confused with the letters. I know them more by color personally uh, but that one is about I don't know 12 or 14 blocks up this way a little far to walk but there are buses that run along Avenida Federico La Croce you can see there's a 25 bus there I don't know what that bus next to it is this is a 63 there's tons of different bus lines that run up and down um, Avenida Federico La Croce and so you can very easily hop on one of those buses, um, like they stop every few blocks along here, and you can take that up to where you'll be able to pick up the uh, green line, the line that runs through Palermo and Recoleta, and some of the other places that we visited actually along that line, right? Not just in uh, our videos from this visit, but also our visit videos from our previous visit here in the summer in Buenos Aires. And of course, I'm gonna link uh, links to playlists for all of our videos from this visit in Buenos Aires, all of our videos from last visit in Buenos Aires, and a playlist for 
uh, all of the different apartments, like the neighborhoods that we've stayed in, in the different cities on our trip. So you can actually go through and see all the different neighborhoods that we've stayed in, in the different cities and different countries, and compare them and see which one you think is the best. Now this one actually, of all the ones we've stayed in, it might be my favorite, I'm not joking. Uh, I really, really like this neighborhood. It has a really cool vibe. We visited this neighborhood one time before, um, during the summer when we were here in our first visit. We went to Chacarita Cemetery because we were trying to find the um, former tomb of Juan Perón, his family tomb, where he was uh, buried for, like where he was entombed before he was moved out to San Vicente. And while we were there at the cemetery, we met a really cool dude named Wolfgang. We found Carlos Gardel's uh, tomb as well. So I did get a chance to walk around this neighborhood then before we went into the cemetery and I really, I just really liked it. <laughs> I liked the vibe of this neighborhood almost immediately when I was walking around in it. Um, it's like, it's hard to explain. It's not boring at all. There's a lot going on in this neighborhood. There's a lot of uh, stuff to do, things to see. It also has a very sort of an old um, kind of feel to it. I don't know how to explain it. Um, it doesn't have like super historical buildings, at least not like certain neighborhoods, but I don't know, there's just something about this neighborhood that feels very, uh, like for example, I'll give you an example. Like this restaurant right here is uh, this, it's like a German, Austri or uh, German, Argentine, Italian kind of a restaurant, just like a neighborhood restaurant. And it's been here for a really, really long time, right? Those two pizzerias, that we went to in our first video, Santa Maria and uh, El Imperio. They've been there since 1947. So like, there are a lot of neighborhood establishment type businesses in this neighborhood um, that make it feel, I don't know, very, very cool. Um, but also it's like not, it's not super touristy neighborhood, which if you've seen some of the other videos that I've made about the neighborhoods where I stay, I don't really like staying in the major, major tourist neighborhoods where you're just surrounded by tourists. Um, I am a tourist, yes, of course, but I'm not doing the typical tourist thing. I'm actually, you know, slow traveling, taking a very long trip uh, and staying for, you know, about a month in each one of the cities where we go. So because of that, I kind of like, I don't know, I like, I like to stay in neighborhoods that feel a little more like less touristy a little more sort of like normal, normal average neighborhoods. You know, let's head down off the main street to get a feel for like what, I don't know, like what a neighborhood feels like that doesn't have a lot of tourists in it. It's just sort of like a neighborhood where people are just like living and doing their thing. You know, they're living their everyday life just to get a little piece of what that feels like and like get a chance uh, you know, have the privilege of living in one of those neighborhoods, even if it's just for like a month. So I really enjoy that. And this neighborhood is definitely like that. This neighborhood feels, you know, like there's there's a lot of life in the neighborhood, but it's also like not, um, I don't know, it's not, it's not a, like a tourist spectacle kind of a neighborhood, like some of the other neighborhoods that I visited. Um, and some of the other neighborhoods where I've actually like considered staying or have stayed in some of the other cities that we visited on our trip. So I'd say this is one of the favorite neighborhoods out of all the ones where we've stayed for those reasons. It also, it has just, I don't know, it has just the right balance of like, Cool and kind of grimy. I don't know how else to explain. I don't know how else to explain it. Like in the in the video we made about Chacarita back in the uh, in the summer, we came here right after having visited Recoleta Cemetery in the neighborhood of Recoleta. And Recoleta is like a very wealthy neighborhood. It is a very heavy tourist neighborhood. Lots of tourists when they come, they stay in Recoleta. It's a very very nice neighborhood. Um, 
And it's almost, for me, like a little too nice. You know what I mean? I walk around there and, uh, I don't know, I just feel kind of out of place in a neighborhood like that. It seems just too, too richy rich for me. Um, now that's not to say that this neighborhood, Chacarita, is like a bad neighborhood or like a super poor neighborhood. It's definitely not that at all. But it has, like I said, just the right balance of like feeling like a cool neighborhood, but also like being a little bit grimy, you know what I mean? Like a little bit edgy, right? Which I think is great. And I think you need that in a neighborhood, at least I do, when I'm staying there. Otherwise, I start to feel like very uncomfortable. You know, when I'm walking around Recoleta, or when I was walking around Recoleta, I felt very uncomfortable. I honestly did. It's just like, man, I don't belong in this neighborhood. Then I remember getting off the, uh, the soup they here in this neighborhood. I walked around for like two blocks, and I was like, yeah, this is, this is more my style. And I immediately remembered this neighborhood when I decided to come back here to Buenos Aires for another visit. This was immediately the neighborhood that I started like looking for potentially a place to stay, if I could possibly stay in this neighborhood. It was something that I wanted to do. Mainly because the last time we were in Buenos Aires, we didn't actually stay in the city. We stayed out in the suburbs, in Zona Sur, in uh, Wilde. And I really enjoyed that. But this time, I wanted to have the experience of staying actually in the city. Staying in a neighborhood that was like right on a, uh, a metro stop, like on a soup day. I wanted to have the experience of staying like close to, uh, a little closer to, you know, all the stuff that's going on in the city and not having to take like a train into the city every day. It's a very different experience when you're in a neighborhood that's really, this isn't like Centro, right? It's not like the center downtown. It's several metro stops away so on the soup day. But because the soup day is so accessible and it's such a like fast way to get around, it's just very, very easy to walk a few blocks down the street, head down the tunnel into the soup day, and a train shows up like three minutes later, you hop on, and you know, 20 minutes later, you're in the Centro, right? And that experience is very different than uh, the experience of being out in the suburbs. And out in the suburbs, um, it's, it's, it's more chill. Like, uh, it's just a more sort of like a, a relaxed stay. And I do really enjoy that. And I mentioned that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about uh, staying out in the suburbs last time we were here. But I wanted to have the experience of staying like in a neighborhood right in the city, just to see what it was like. And uh, it did not disappoint, especially because this neighborhood, um, like I mentioned, has a very, very good balance of being very lively, but also like kind of chill. It's not like a super, super well-known nightlife neighborhood, although there are some nightlife things, bars and whatnot, that you can go to in this neighborhood. But it's not a neighborhood that's like people flock to from all other neighborhoods to like go, um, you know, and do the nightlife stuff. So I kind of I kind of dig that. I don't really like staying in like super, super popular nightlife zones just because like, on the days that you're, you don't want to like go out to any of those bars or clubs or anything, you just kind of want to go to sleep. It's kind of hard to do because everybody else is out there like, you know, partying until the sun comes up, especially here in Argentina because that's how they do. The party doesn't start in Argentina until like one o'clock in the morning. So if you're not really used to that, um, then <laughs> you're going to be like unpleasantly surprised when you're staying in one of those neighborhoods and surrounded by like bars and clubs and whatnot. So this neighborhood though is close enough to some of the other neighborhoods like Belgrano, which is a uh, pretty, 
I would say a pretty like well-known touristy kind of a neighborhood. Belgrano is like a place that you would probably get recommended to you if you were a tourist looking for a place to stay in um, in Buenos Aires. And it's about, I don't know, a couple miles from here, very close. In this neighborhood, you're also like, I don't know, four or five metro stops away from Abasto. It's another like relatively well-known tourist neighborhood. It's the neighborhood where the Carlos Gardel Museum was that we visited, his old house. And there's a big mall there, the Abasto Shopping Center. It's a pretty high-end mall. So uh, that's definitely a, a touristy type place. Also, you can get from here by bus over to Palermo. Any one of the parts of the big, big Palermo neighborhood. Just another tourist, touristy kind of neighborhood. And you can get to any one of those parts, any one of those neighborhoods by bus from like 20 minutes from here. So, this one, Chacarita, kind of centrally located enough compared to the rest of the neighborhoods that you can get to them, but you're not staying directly in them, which is pretty cool. And, as you know from our first video that we made here, uh, two of the best, most famous pizzerias in uh, probably all of Buenos Aires are right here in this neighborhood, right on the same block. Uh, I have to admit that I went and ate at Santa Maria, which turned out to be a very delicious spot. And I went and ate there <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, I got a little fat in this neighborhood. There's a lot of really good uh, restaurants in this neighborhood of all different um, price ranges too. So there's like very cheap, from the very cheap like hole in the wall type little mom and pop restaurants to like much more expensive, um, fancy kind of special occasion type restaurants, I guess you would call them, right? And there are there are a lot. And not just uh, like typical Argentine fare, like uh, pastas, pizza, asado, and parrillas, like barbecue grill type restaurants. Um, there's also a couple of Peruvian restaurants in this neighborhood. There is, like I mentioned, that German restaurant that we went past. Um, yeah, there's lots of different options as far as uh, food and restaurants, and pretty much I mean, honestly, pretty much any neighborhood in Buenos Aires is going to have really, really good restaurant options because Buenos Aires is one of the great restaurant cities of the world. Here's that Dia grocery store that I was talking about. And this is what I mentioned. This Dia supermercado is right here. And the uh, Carrefour Market, the little supermercado that we walked by, before about what 10 minutes ago in the video that's right around the corner over here so everything's super close and like right across the street next to the bank there's a vegetable market there's another vegetable market just around the corner here across the street from uh, Carnes Forest so whatever you need is definitely here you don't have to leave the neighborhood if you want to leave the neighborhood, you can. And there's lots of other great stuff at, near the other soup they stops. But you definitely don't have to leave this neighborhood to get everything uh, that you need to get. Here's the other vegetable market. Right here. And in amongst all of these stores and markets, there are uh, pizza places, empanada joints, there's little bakeries, panaderias, cafeterias, all kinds of stuff. And many, many bus stops along this street where many, many different bus lines stop. So it's very easy getting around to other places very quickly without having to uh, have a car or having to take a cab. But 
should you need to take a cab. They're also all over this neighborhood as well. There's one right there. Here's one coming towards us on the opposite side. There's one right there on the corner. Catching a cab would probably take you about 30 seconds in this neighborhood. Literally, however long it takes you to walk to the curb and stick your arm out, that's how long it's gonna take you to catch a cab. There's one place I want to talk about before we end this video, because I think we've seen a very good amount of this neighborhood. But there's a place right here across the street, and it's called Museo Fotográfico Simic. And this is a super interesting place. And I really want to point it out because um, I was actually staying right above that place. The apartment where we stayed is like right above us. And the host of the apartment, uh, the host of the apartment is a family that owns this place. And it's basically a, it's a museum of like antique cameras that is in a bar slash cafe. I don't know how else to explain it. It's a cafe, it's a bar, they have really good food, they have delicious coffee, you can get a wine or a beer in there. Um, and they also have a really, really cool collection of antique cameras that, um, that they've collected over the years. A gentleman named Alejandro Simic is the, uh, the guy who started the, like opened the place, owns the place, and his family operates it. And they also were very, very kind and, and generous hosts and hosted me in the uh, rental apartment above the museum. So I think we should go in there and take a look and see inside and that'll be how we end our, uh, our tour here around the neighborhood. So as you can see from inside, it's super quaint in here with just cases everywhere full of antique cameras. Look at this old camera. And this giant case on the wall with all these old cameras in it, everywhere you look, cases full of old cameras. They even have glass tabletops with cameras inside the tables. So while you're here, you can order like a, a steak and uh, some hearty mashed potatoes, get yourself a beer. And uh, on week weekends, on the nights, they, uh, they play jazz music. There's live jazz every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So you can come, have a little drink, dance the night away with your sweetheart. It's, it's just a wonderful place. Really, really good vibes. Very charming place. So that's it, you've seen the neighborhood, you've seen the Museo Fotográfico Simic, and we're standing right here in front of the door to the apartment where we're staying. And I would say, look, if you're coming to visit Buenos Aires, uh, I would 100% recommend this neighborhood. Like I mentioned, uh, this might be my favorite of all the neighborhoods where I've stayed so far in either of our visits to Buenos Aires. I really, really like this neighborhood, Chacarita. And uh, if you decide to stay here, I think you're gonna like it too. But that's our stay for Buenos Aires. We're gonna say goodbye to Chacarita. We're gonna say goodbye to Museo Fotográfico Simic. We're gonna say goodbye to Buenos Aires because we're moving on. And this time we are moving on to a new city in Buenos Aires or in uh, Argentina. We're moving on to a new city in Argentina that we have not yet visited. And that is the beautiful city of Rosario in Santa Fe province. So next time you see us, Next time we see you, uh, we will be in the beautiful city of Rosario, Santa Fe, Argentina. And I'm really excited about it. I hope you'll stick around for that. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.